Hi, welcome to the last part of my 10 part tutorial series Learn C++ in 2 hours. This video covers some leftover miscellaneous topics. When the C++ program grows, it becomes very hard to manage it in just one file. So we divide it into several different files. The standard practice is to keep the class definition in different files. For example, if we have to divide them into different files, then that's how it should be done. We have to create individual header files for each class. For example, circle.h for circle and cylinder.h for cylinder. So definition is in the header files and implementation is in .cpp file. You can also have different implementation file for each header file. And the main has to be separate in a cpp file. When the compilation happens, it creates the object code implementation.o that has digested the code for header files and their implementation and another object code is main.o that has driver code and only the definition of classes which makes a compiler satisfied that the definition is available but when you try to call a method its definition is available but not the implementation because the implementation is in implementation.o. Then the linker links these two files and creates an executable file. Let's refer to the lesson 7's example of circle and cylinder shapes. Here we had two classes circle and cylinder and the main was creating their objects. Now to have multiple files for one program we need to create a project file new project and select console application and provide any appropriate name so part 10 so you can create your project here let's say part 10 project it has automatically created the driver here you can see a different main with some additional parameters these are useful when we run the program using command prompt now to have this kind of structure First, we need to create two header files. And I'm sorry about the small fonts. So here we already have main.cpp. We need to create a new file, save it, and call it circle.h. And another one is cylinder.h. Now we can transfer the code from our previous tutorial. So I can simply copy this and paste it here but as I mentioned earlier I need to separate definition and implementation so I must get rid of this implementation code same here and rest of this looks okay same thing I can do with the cylinder I need the header files as well so it looks okay note that this file requires circle as well so we must include circle but here this time we will be using double quotes instead of arrow brackets we can build this project Let's save this file looks okay next part is implementation so we need to create a new file save let's call it implementation.cpp and again we can borrow the code from here so I need these two methods but again, I am using circle, so I must include the header file circle.h. But here we need to indicate that these methods belong to circle, so we need scope resolution operator by writing class name and double colon. So once you have it, these methods will be recognized. And same thing I can do it here float and area is part of circle. Done. Let us first only concentrate on circle and create circle object in the main. So again we got the code from here. Copy and paste. I don't have cylinder yet so I'll get rid of this. Now to have circle I must include circle.h. Now let's rebuild all and execute. So this program is working fine. Now let's do the same thing with cylinder. 
we get the implementation again I must include cylinder file by using hash include and I must also use scope resolution operator this is fine and cylinder but if I try to build it I am getting a major error redefinition of pi and also redefinition of class circle so why this redefinition of error is coming up this happens because there is redefinition of circle class let's see how it is happening since we have included both of these files so circle.h is here which defines circle class and we also have cylinder.h so if we go to cylinder.h it has circle.h again so that means there is redefinition of circle class now there is only one way to avoid this error is by having conditional compilation in conditional compilation we have to check if a class has been defined we do not redefine it and to do that we need to make use of preprocessor directives so here the general template is given we need to define a flag or a constant let's say that is x so when the compiler passes this code x has not been defined so we define it here and at the same time we define our class but in next passing since x has already been defined it won't redefine the class so that's how we can avoid redefinition of a class let's do it in the code so we write preprocessor directives in circle.h so we write it here hash if not defined we can pick any appropriate name for a flag or constant or variable the standard name is circle underscore h all should be in caps so in the first pass if this is not defined we define it here circle h we also need to define the scope of this if structure by writing hash and if so this is a preprocessor directive that means if this particular variable is not defined then we compile the code in next occasion since the circle.h has already been defined this class will not be redefined generally we do not put the indentation so we put it back same thing we can do with the cylinder since pi is already part of circle.h we can get rid of this pi and only include hash if not defined cylinder so define cylinder and and if so if we rebuild it oops redefinition of constructor sorry I have forgotten to remove this code from here since I only need to keep the definition here this is solved now rebuild it again done now no matter how many times you include circle.h or cylinder.h you will never get any redefinition error so let's now complete the code and get cylinder as well it should go into main so this is cylinder object put it here get rid of this code and then and we must include cylinder hash include cylinder.h now rebuild all all good now let's run it so this program is completely working fine so you can see here we have created two header files circle.h and cylinder.h implementation is in implementation.cpp you can have separate implementation files for circle and cylinder as well your choice and lastly we have main and this code looks much cleaner so this is a standard way of writing big programs I have just one last topic to cover which is the usefulness of a destructor as you know the constructor is called before the instantiation of an object conversely the destructor is called before the object is destroyed it is useful where the object holds some memory and does not release it explicitly to describe the destructor I am using a complicated code of a singly linked list which comes under the topic of data structures please get the code from my github link so briefly here is a linked list with a default constructor and 
the destructor. Please note that the destructor is written similar to the constructor with no return type and it has the same name as a class with a tilde in front. So this linked list has two methods add and print. It uses a node class which is here. This works as a building block for linked list. You may notice there are some new syntax which is template. So template is generally used for generic data type because we want to have linked list for any data type. So instead of providing a specific data type, we just write class T. Otherwise, I would have written something like inter data. But as I said, I want it to be generic so that it should work for char, flow, double and so on. And to specify this data type, we use arrow brackets. Something like this. Or more specifically, I put char inside arrow brackets to create list of characters, which in turn would make all the T's character data type. Moving on, in the main, I just want to call this function add list to add these members. And after that, this linked list should release the memory automatically. And to do that, I have a destructor, which is here. And this code releases all the acquired memory blocks. So let me run this code. Compile and run. So you can see here, before this line is executed, a destructor has been called and all the allocated memory has been released. This is an easy and implicit way of releasing the memory blocks. Since we are using a generic data type, which is T, so now I can replace char with any other data type. Let's say int and instead of chars, I can have integers. Now I don't have to change anything else. I just need to compile and run and it should work. So this is working fine. So you can see here how easy it is to use generic data type with template feature. So here we have a node pointer n. By default, it does not point to any valid location. We can say it points to an unknown random location. But if we write a new node, then a memory has been allocated for it. And that memory is logged for node pointer n. That means no one else can access this memory block. Even if this reference is destroyed, the memory is still logged. So we have to ensure to release this memory block and return it to the RAM. So to do that, we have to execute delete n. Actually, delete node here is a misnomer because it does not delete any data. However, it only releases a memory block. So without delete, the memory block is locked and with delete, the memory block is free again. Thanks for watching this tutorial series. Please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.